Pretty scary, right? Well, that's just exactly what happened with all of the stimulation, with all the funds that are coming out. Everybody, welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today we're going to go over just a couple of things about some concerning issues that I see happening, uh, which would be how everybody wants to dismiss crypto and say that nobody needs it. So first of all, we'll talk about our institutions aren't interested in crypto, something about JP Morgan. I'll talk about don't forget the liars and how Jim Cramer actually has a pretty good point. And lastly, why I'm not too worried. And uh, we'll go over all that stuff. So first of all, welcome. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's amazing that uh, we just uh, how fast time flies, right? Uh, we just got over Christmas, and, uh, of course, uh, here we are. So let's jump into it and take a look at today's first story. So today, interesting Uh, JP Morgan, crypto is a non-existent asset class for most large institutional investors. And it's kind of odd how JP Morgan comes out and talks about these things, but, uh, you know, Hey, here we are. So this is a quick story from, uh, Bitcoin.com and just caught my attention because I think what's going to happen is we're going to see more of these stories come out, especially as the market continues to fall. And, uh, I mean, the bottom may have been in, I'm not for sure but I don't think it is, especially with all the data that's coming out. But uh, if it keeps falling, even if, even if it goes up a little bit, it doesn't matter. You're going to see more stories like this. JP Morgan Asset Management's head of institutional portfolio strategy, Jared Gro Gross, said this. As an asset class, crypto is effectively non-existent for most large institutional investors. Volatility is too high. Lack of intrinsic return that you can point to makes it very challenging. Most institutional investors probably are breathing a sigh of relief that they didn't jump into that market and are probably not going to be doing so anytime soon. And again, this is just one of those stories that comes out and makes you think, well, I mean, from people outside of our bubble, people would think of this and say, wow, JP Morgan says that, but it's got to be true because, you know, they're a large institution and that's what it is. However, if we, if we peel back some layers and take a look who's really getting into it, investment giant State Street, for example, said in September it sees unwinning demand for crypto from institutional investors. NASDAQ recently published a crypto unit called NASDAQ Digital Assets. And I got to tell you, if, if NASDAQ was, was going to put forth the money and the effort to bring people in, it's probably because there's an opportunity there, not because they want to throw money away, but I could be wrong, uh, citing increased demand. A survey released in November by crypto exchange Coinbase showed that institutional investors increased their allocations during the crypto winter. I think it's important to note that, of course, um, money is not made in, in bull markets. Uh, we've taken a look at this numerous times. You can dollar cost average all you want to in, in uh, bull markets. It's not going to really do much for you unless you get in when things are extremely low, like right now. That's not investment advice. It's just fact of what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want to. But I think uh, there's something to be said for that. And then a, a study published by a financial giant Fidelity in October showed that 74% of institutional investors surveyed plan to invest into digital assets. And, and this whole story just reminds me of like, you know, because we've there's a there's a, a conflict of, of what's being said here. You know, on one side, you got JP Morgan says, no, no one's really going to get into that. And then on the other side, we've got the data that says that no institutions will get in. Of course, retail's here, but uh, of course, all the tourists are gone. And it just remind me, it just reminded me of the things that are said publicly, but the things that are done behind closed doors or, or really just to, just to uh, sleight of hand and to uh, redirect what people are looking at. And to prove my point, there was this great little snippet here. And this is when I had a uh, friend of the show, Jerry Hall, on, and we were talking about Kevin O'Leary and uh, how he came up uh, against uh, Squawk Box. And, and he talked about how great crypto was and everything else. And they pretty much called him out on it. So just take a listen to this real quick. It's about a minute and a half. And we'll kind of make you understand that even though people say publicly one thing, they do things behind closed doors a hell of a lot differently. Just take a listen right here. This is about a minute or so. Time goes so quick. I, I just, it seems like only yesterday, uh, I was totally um, arguing with you on, on Squawk Box. You went from Charlie Munger's view on Bitcoin 
to Michael Saylor's view on Bitcoin. And I actually kidded you about it. I said, who are you? You, you, you? you may know nothing, but you're never in doubt. You're so strident when you said it was just worthless and rat poison. And then six months later, you're like this Bitcoin bull. And, and I, so I didn't understand that conversion. Did that conversion coincide with the 15 million that you got from, from FTX? No, I was investing three and a half years earlier than that. I changed my mind back in early 2018 when I saw the regulators in jurisdictions like Canada, Switzerland, and Abu Dhabi start to change their minds. But I'll tell you what really got me investing, Joe. Early 2018, right? Now, Kevin could have gotten some dates wrong. I mean, it happens. I forget things. I forget where my keys are. I forget uh, certain dates when I invest into crypto. I get you, right? But early 2018 is when he, when he changed his mind and started to invest. However... This is a nice little article from May 14th, 2019. Mr. Wonderful Ken Leary calls Bitcoin garbage. It's going to take down the whole crypto industry. And I got to tell you, it's that old adage, watch what they do, not what they say. So in the background, when we hear about these things where like, oh, you know, uh, Bitcoin is dead and Bitcoin is dead today and Bitcoin is dead tomorrow. And of course, everything's going to, going to collapse. Um, just, ima- just remember that it's not the case. Just take a look at something like this. Bitcoin is dead. And we hear this all the time. Crypto is dead. Bitcoin is dead. Here's the cumulative value trade. Here's the PNL, just the market cap. It's all the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So again, just remind, just remind yourself, and you're going to hear these stories more often. You're going to hear this from the MSNBCs, the CNBCs, the the financial giants, the smart money, what I call big money, because they're not really that smart. And they're just going to come out and just just rally against it. And uh, that's just how it's going to be for this entire bear market. And that's why it's so difficult to get through it, because you keep getting bombarded with these things. But that's just how it is, which will lead me to my next point. Jim Cramer. <laughs> Everybody seems to lo- love to hate this guy, but uh, he does make a good point here. And uh, I'll, I'll go over this article piece by piece. So Jim Cramer urges the SEC to do a big crypto sweep, says, I wouldn't touch crypto in a million years. And I got to tell you with what he says here. He's right. Sorry, he is. So this is what we got. Uh, Jim Cramer, again, I would not touch crypto in a million years because I wouldn't trust the deposit bank. What he's talking about here is the centralized exchanges. And he's right. I don't trust those guys either. I don't trust any of them anymore. I mean, how could we? I mean, we're just so... I was gullible. It's just the truth. So when he says something like this, he is 100% right. I don't trust any centralized exchanges either. So good one on you, Jim. You're right. He says, I'm just saying you are using a lot of blind faith. And I like to have my money at JP Morgan. And I check on money to see whether my balance is there. It feels good. But I got to remind Jim that you can do that uh, publicly. You can take a look on, on your wallet, whether that be a Bitcoin wallet, Ethereum wallet, uh, Binance Smart Chain. It doesn't matter. All your all your wallets, you can look up all the transactions. And let's just pick one. Like this is on etherscan.io. And let's try. Okay. I don't know who this is. This is not mine, just so you know. But uh, you can look a look and say, oh, I got how much tokens do I have in this one? Wow, this guy's got hex. $24 worth. So I'm going to look at. Uh, let's see what else he got. Alice, Aeros Sweep, Alchemy, four cents. Watch out. Baller. But he get, but I mean, on, they're in the OMG network. That's weird, but okay. So, I mean, you can look at this all day long on everybody that's out there. As long as you know their their wallet address, you can take a look. So I know when, when Jim's like, it makes me feel good because it's in JP Morgan. I'm like, is it really? Because remember, if it's in JP Morgan, they're also doing fractional reserve lending. And, you know, who knows if that's really in there? Hey, I'll tell Jim this. Uh, everybody who, who is at JP Morgan that in the, in a specific branch of a bank, if you had a, not even, not even hundred percent, 50% of the people run up to the bank and go, give me all my money. I'm like, we'll come back next week. Cause we don't have it because what we don't carry money here. We don't carry that much anyhow. So when he talks about how it's there, I get what he's saying, but uh, come on. He says, uh, and he's writing this one, try getting your money out. He advised crypto investors, adding that when he had money at a crypto firm, it was a fight to get the money out, a fight. And he's right, it was. That's why we have the rules underneath. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam. Don't leave anything in exchanges. I think we've all learned that. Uh, Ledger's coming out with this cool thing called Stacks. I've got my Ledger Nano S and Xs. Works out great. Don't use leverage and take profits. So when Jim talks about it, he's right on that one. On that one. Here's where we differ. 
uh, he says, I think that everybody who owns these various coins, you know, Solana, Litecoin, I do think you're an idiot. Okay. I didn't go to college to get stupid. These people who own these things should not own them. They shouldn't own them. Uh, I don't see the point of this one. Um, real, I mean, on some of these, I can see, you know, like, I mean, if, if, if Jim would have said, made the debate about Solana being the decentralized issue and whatever, I'm like, oh, okay, you got a point. But in all these things, it's, it really just comes down to what is the utility? How big is the community? How, how good the tokenomics? How big is the team? The thing we always talk about, which is the cut, C-U-T-T. And then he says, SEC to do a big crypto sweep. He says, he says I think they need to do a sweep. They have to stop people creating money. And in this one, I kind of do agree with them. I, I agree that, that on some of these projects, they are kind of worthless in all honesty, as far as, as far as utility goes. But I'm going to take this one step further. And I want to show you where I think things are going. Uh, I think this was a, a snippet. That's uh, Larry Fink. He's the CEO of BlackRock. You know, BlackRock, 10 trillion assets under management. It's about 50 seconds. Take a listen to this. I think this is where things are going to go. And I think really what it comes down to is just getting, just meeting in the middle with regulators because they're not going to give up. Okay. They're going to regulate the hell out of the centralized exchanges. Fine. I don't care. I don't, I don't own stock in those. I don't care. But for the projects and things like that, uh, here's where I think things are going. So just take a listen to what he talks about here. And then before I play it, I want you to pay really close attention to see if he says crypto or if he says blockchain. Very important. Take a listen here. The whole foundation of what crypto is, it's supposed to be a distributed ledger that is across the system. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Yeah, it sure does. So yeah, so just pay attention because like some people are going to say, and I, 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 I hear you understand, you know, what Larry said there is like, well, is he talking about crypto? Is he talking about blockchain? Because he talks about, you know, this is some pretty good, some pretty great stuff as far as technology. And in all honesty, so for this one, if you take a look at it, and you say to yourself, well, which way is he going? You could do these things on a, on a private blockchain. But here's the thing. If you're BlackRock and you've got global clients, and they've got a bank in, I don't know, Bangladesh or in the UK or in Ireland or in uh, Romania or someplace like that. And you're going to trust their ledger with your ledger and go back and forth. I don't think that's how it's going to work. I think if you're going to tokenize securities, and we talked about tokenized securities, he's talking about tokenizing stocks. Stocks are securities. I think some cryptos are securities. I think there's an investment contract. I do. I know people hate me for it, but it's the truth. And I just think if we can just get out of our own way and just say, you know what? We know Bitcoin's not a, a security. You know, the SEC can even, even Gary Gens is going to admit that and say it's, it's a commodity. Great. If you want to go forth and just go, okay, everything else is security. For, uh, first of all, I don't know how you can say it because, because the, the, the utility aspect, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter right now. If you just say, okay, it's a security, fine. Register it. Here's what it is. We pay our taxes. Move forward. And that's it. And we and we can uh, put those, we can tokenize stocks, we can tokenize real estate, we can tokenize, I mean, anything that you really think, even commodities, we could tokenize those and put those on the blockchain on layer one solution and everybody moves forward so much. Really, do we really need the crypto number 584 out of 10,000 that are out there to really get going? I don't think that's true. That's how it is. That's just how I see things. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. I know I'll get, people won't like that, but it's just how I think. And lastly, and I also disagree with this one, with Mark Cuban. So Mark, he makes a point 
but there's some things I just I can't get on board with here. So Mark says, Bitcoin's a good investment. Gold investors are dumb. First of all, gold investors are not dumb. I, well, I mean, you could be right there. Like I invest in gold and I'm not too smart, but I still do. And I, I, I still think there is, is a, a, a piece for gold here. But anyhow, so Mark Cuban was on a podcast. It was uh, Bill Mars. And, and, and Bill was talking about uh, how much he likes gold. And he says, <laughs> uh, Mark goes, if you have gold, you're dumb as F. The podcast host, Bill Mayer, proceeded to argue that gold never goes away and is like a hedge against everything else. Cuban replied, no, but it's not a hedge, right? What is the stored value? And you don't own the physical gold. Do you? Gold is a stored value and so is Bitcoin. I got to agree. Gold is a store of value and so is Bitcoin. It's just one is extremely volatile and one seems to not do anything. <laughs> That's how it is. When you own gold, all you own is a digital transaction. You don't own the gold bar. That's not true. You can own the gold bu bullion. You can own the gold bar. You can own that. You can keep it there. It's not, I mean, a lot of people don't do that, but you can. And that's just the truth. Uh, until I like, think 1974, somewhere around there, you couldn't own the, a physical gold, but now you can. So that's, that's, that's inaccurate. If everything went, and he says, if everything went to hell in a hand basket and he had a gold bar, you know what happened? Someone would beat the F out of you or kill you and take your gold bar. I got to disagree here. I think in all honesty, if anything goes to hell in a handbasket and it's Mad Max Thunderdome type of world, they don't give a crap about your gold bar. What they're going to steal is your water. They're going to steal your food, your shelter and, and your weapons. So like when he talks about that, I know some of the gold bugs and even like some Bitcoin people are like, oh, which if you don't understand. It's going to be really, really great in doomsday. No, it's not. People are going to steal your food. Come on, don't be stupid. And that's it. So look, that's it for today and my little rants that's going on. Um, try to make this a little bit quicker and go from there. But that's it. If you got to take off, take off. Now I'm going to do a little Q&A, answer all your questions, best of my abilities. We go from there. But I got to tell you, I think this is, it's the best time to make profits, but it's the worst time mentally because you have to get through the slog and good luck with that. Anyhow, Q&A, let's get to it. Let's see. Hey, little Tesla. Yeah, Chewy. My dog, gone. Stay a day, Mark Cuban. Yeah. Name calling is not cool. It is not cool. Trust no one in 2023, but verify. Yeah, that's it. Black Rock sucks. Black Rider didn't suck. Black Rock's a bellwether for where things are going. And I think it's going to be a pretty good day when they come out and say this is it as far as crypto goes but yeah uh kramer did go to college amazingly <laughs> i don't think anybody went to college to get stupid no but i think they went there to spend, spend a lot of money that's for sure uh yes thank you Becky, for all the links i appreciate it Yeah, be real. Nobody has savings. Alex got a good point. I saw some data that came out that took a look at uh, the amount of debt that's on uh, the average American's credit card. It has skyrocketed, skyrocketed. And also data that looks at uh, the amount of savings that people actually have. And during the pandemic, when we were airdropping money like crazy, uh, we had a pretty good amount of savings. And now that we're out of that time frame, and people had a chance to spend things. The actual savings accounts have been dwindling rapidly. And then once that runs out, people put things on credit cards. And then when that runs out, then we go through credit crunch, foreclosures, and you know the rest. So that's where I think we're going in 2023. I don't have much faith in 2023. I just really don't. That's okay. Like some people look at me and like, well, Rob, you, you know, you're so down about, about the market. Not really. I mean, Trust me, there's other things to be down about. It's not the market. The market is the market, and we just have to be realist about it. This is the time to, to invest into things, and you, no one's going to want to hear this. Well, some, some are not going to want to hear this, but you're, you're, you're a long ways off from, from, from really hitting all-time highs. And so this is the time to think to yourself, what's my options? I can sell everything and take massive losses. That's what I could have done in 2018 too. 
but I'm pretty damn stubborn and I don't like to do that. So I just wrote it out and dollar the cost average. Now there was times when I would step away from the market because I was just so sick of it. I was so sick of hearing people like myself going, you just got a dollar cost average, you just kind of get in there. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? So like, and then I would take a, I would take breaks. I would come back and I would, and then that would happen over two or three years. So don't worry. It's not like, I mean, if you're here right now, you're not a, a tourist, but at some point you're going to lose a little faith. You're going to get, go away. And that's normal. It's normal to do that. And, uh, you'll come back and, and you'll get, you'll hear a good story or you'll see some good data. And, and then of course things will, will fall apart and you'll, you'll leave and come back. And that's just usually how it is. For the majority, not for everybody. I think if you're here right now, you're probably one of the one of the rare few that sticks around for the whole thing. And uh, that's it. And then, of course, the next bull run that happens, you know, then, of course, the big question will be, can you sell in time? And that's that's harder than I think that's one of the harder things to do than buying dips. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it's a good question. So isn't that what Black, BlackRock, J.P. Morgan, and all have been doing, developing their own private blockchain on top of certain projects? Yeah, I don't really know. So like you'll have Ethereum working with different different companies to make their own private blockchain. So I don't know, I'm not a developer exactly how that works, but as time goes on, you know, you, ha you, can, have block you can have private blockchains within your organization and, and bring people onto it, but what's the point of that in a, in a, in a, in a private ledger? I don't get it. So like, that's the whole beauty of it. You have these ledgers, you know, uh, scattered about on, you know, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of different nodes and everybody can, can take a look at it and they can verify it and they, it can be validated and they can go through. That's, that's where the power is. The power is not just, I, I, we've got two ledgers, one here and one at Pete's place and uh, me and Pete verify it. So you're good. That's not that if, if I think as time goes on and people start to understand what blockchain technology is, then they'll kind of understand it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rob, which does better 25 Tesla stock or Bitcoin? Eh, probably Bitcoin. I'd feel more comfortable with Bitcoin, honestly. I have some Tesla stock. I'm not big into stock, but stocks, but I own some. I'm more bigger into, excuse me, crypto and ah, and real estate. No, I didn't. Who's Ben McKenzie? I don't know that person. Uh, your view on Polkadot? Thinks will probably do pretty well. Depends on if they can uh, keep developing and move forward. It's it all depends. It's just like it's just like regular businesses. You know, you can have a great idea. And have a good, you know, uh, foundation. But if you don't grow, expand, get a, a new customer base, have real utility, and actually make it out, then you, if you're not growing, you're dying. And that's just how business is. So if Polkadot can't, you know, bring in, you know, other huge businesses that uh, want to build on top of it or want to actually use it and have real use case and real utility and distinguish themselves, they will die, just like all the rest of them. I'm I'm rooting for them though. I, I own some. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah, it's worked. What's the exchange you trust the most during these times? Or, or what do you look at when evaluating risk in an exchange? So I look at first of all, how long they've been around. You know how long do you know how long Kraken's been around? It's a good question. I forgot. Let's see. Where's this website? Uh I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's Dan Teaches Crypto, and it's free. And there's this part that, first of all, I'm just letting you know, it's free to a point because everything's on there as an affiliate link. So like when you click on, where are we? When you click on like the Coinbase thing, uh, that's an affiliate link but they haven't really paid out any affiliates anyhow. It's kind of sucks. Uh, and then Kraken, that is an affiliate link and also KuCoin's affiliate link. But these are the ones I use. But back to the question, Rob, you know, Coinbase was established in July, 2012 and Kraken was July, 2011. Can you believe that? Yeah, long time. Long time, Kraken, Kraken. 
Oh, I got to change that. Jesse Powell is not the CEO anymore. There's Johnny Lou, serving 2017. So yeah, it just depends on how long things have been around. And I got to tell you, longevity kind of gets into me. So like for me, I just buy everything on Coinbase and I transfer it to my ledger. Very simple. And the ones that can't go to my ledger, like near, I just put it into my, my near wallet. And that's it. Uh, Dan, you are not doing DCA with James and anymore. Uh, no. Rob, can you grow a big white senator? I already had one, uh, but I just I trimmed it down. Ran, ran, not Dan now. Yeah, Rand's on the show now. Good, that's good. I just don't have. I just, it's just too, too toxic. Uh, I was I was tired of the, I was tired of the, of the negativity on that show. So I just had to step away. Ah, Sin City, what's up, gents? Where'd you guys go? God dang it, where'd it go? I hate when I, when I, there it is. Hello, guys. You guys are doing great things. Check out their channel, Sin City Crypto. I used to live there for two years. Well, Henderson, or Hender Tucky, as people in Las Vegas call it. <laughs> yeah. I think Rob hides all his gold bars in his mouth. You know where I own most of my gold? Um, in, uh, in iTrust, in my crypto IRA, because they allow me to do crypto and gold and silver. Actually, I have gold and silver in there. So, yes. Exactly. Bah humbug. Oh, that's a good one. Let's see. Partner. There is, um, let me see here. What? Come on. There we go. So Vicky says, do you think crypto, crypto suffers from the Gartner hype cycle? I think I'm a big believer in cycles predominantly here and then you can see here Gardner hike so this is this peak of inflated expectations this is every every all-time high and every all-time high is the same thing happening over and over again every four years so like in 2013 you know, Bitcoin, people just thought it was going to be the, that was it. People were going to, you know, FOMO in and, and they did. And that was it. But of course, you know, it dies down because people are like, wait, wait, who, how many people use this? Not that many. Okay, cool. And then of course, in 2017, we thought it was going to be the biggest thing ever. And uh, then we started to realize, wait, who, who's going to use this? And then of course, this, you know, the CME had their, had their futures contract which allowed them to short the hell out of Bitcoin. And then it's just everything just demolished. And then of course, here we are again uh, in 2021 and we just got way ahead of ourselves. And I personally believe that one of the problems with, with 2021, because it was, it was just different than here and here. There's no blow off top per se, but there was a good one. Caitlin Long was on Mark Moss's channel and she was talking about how the bull run was stolen this time, basically because of, of uh, over leverage and rehypothecation and just the demand for not real crypto, not real Bitcoin, but paper Bitcoin. And it screwed everything up. And that's, and that was part of that was all these rehypothecation centralized players. And that's, I think, what screwed everything up. Now we know our, we know the lessons here. And I think it's going to be a better, it's a better session, hopefully in this next upcoming cycle, but we'll see. So yes, to, to answer Vicky's question in a long drawn out manner, it's always the same thing. And, and you can see like, doesn't this match every four year cycle? Like, look at this. It goes up a little blop and down, right? Up, down, and then a little blop up. Eh, eh. Jesus, criminy Christmas. That looks exactly like it. Look at that. So yeah, and then the next one was a little bit screwy, but and you can see how 
where we're going. So good question, Vicky. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you think DeFi will do the do well the next cycle? I don't know. I always thought that gaming would do better. Gaming and NFTs, not the goofy NFTs that we buy now. Those are stupid. But like the ones that like actually have like utility and like NFT for like your ID or NFT for like real estate or or tokenization of like assets like like uh, uh, BlackRock CEO was talking about. So I, th that's where I, I see more things going. You know, real utility and actually does something. Ah, Jang Chow. I doubt Binance is, buy is buying Voyager. Huh, how much of that billion is BNB that we know is insolvent? Binance trying to play old Voyager asset race. Especially all this KuCoin we've been next to to earn stake. I don't know about KuCoin, but as I understood it, and, Jay and everybody can, can correct me on this one, I understand this was a cash deal. It wasn't, they weren't putting up their BNB coin for Voyager. I don't think so. Because that would make no sense. Because if you think about it, that's what, that's what FTX was doing. They were going to give FTT token to Voyager and then everybody's going to be whole and that token is worthless. But I mean, I could be wrong. But that doesn't make any sense. Why the hell would they, why would they go for that deal? If that was the deal. Yeah. Aristotle said, yeah, past performance is never an indication of future performance. Exactly. That's what I tell my wife all the time. So let's see. Any good AI projects? No, but I mean, there's some great websites. I, I should I should share these websites with everybody. They're pretty great. Like you can do like automations of uh, like script GPT, and you can do things with like uh, Pictory, app.pictory.ai. You can roll your your videos through and and uh, spit out some really good text. It's awesome. <laughs> A rational says the second half of 2023, everything rises. I hope you're right. That'd be great. <laughs> what are your top 10 coins you pull from drip drops on Cardano Rob? I haven't pulled anything from there and I don't know how long. Are any of them worth anything? That, that I guess that'd be the big question. I like what drip drops is doing. It's pretty cool. You know, when you when you stake with, you know, uh, with like D news or something for your Cardano, it actually give you some other tokens, which great. Fetch it. Yeah, fetch AI. Fan man, hey Rob, did you ever buy in the cryptoverse? Yes, I bought four parcels, but not much happened with them. Don't expect them to ha anything to happen for like three or four years. Let's see. CZ is obviously more trustworthy than SBF. If you think so, whichever comes in the bag. Yeah, me and Tesla in the same boat. I want to get all my money back too. That's it. Also, uh, I'm going to let you guys on a little secret. Uh, I am going to do a giveaway. And oh, let's be honest. How many of us are in, in peak performance shape? Raise your hand. Exactly. Nobody. So New Year's resolution is coming up, right? We want to get into shape in some way, shape, or form, right? So I, you can do anything you want to, but the easy way I found to get in shape is just to walk. Just, just start walking more. And for that, we're going to use Sweatcoin because I am heavily biased because I own a bunch of it. And the Sweatcoin app is free to download. Did you know that? You can download it for, for free. And what we're going to do is the top 30 people. Right now, there's a leaderboard. and There's only like 120 people in there. So what I want you to do is we're going to download the Sweatcoin app. We're going to start January 1st. We're going to stop January. Is it 30 or 31 days in January? I forget. And what we're going to do is the top 30 people, you guys are going to win things. And we've, I've already got some, some, some good deals lined up. First of all, winner's is going to get uh, an Into the Cryptoverse premium membership. You're also going to get a Coin Ledger membership, which is to, for taxes. You're also going to get like between 2,000 and 5,000 sweat coins. And you're going to get a Shield Folio. All those things for number one. Number two, person who comes in second, you're going to get like a thousand sweat coins. You're going to get a shield folio. You're going to get access to some other things that I'm, I'm uh, talking to people with, perhaps maybe a ledger or a stacks or something like that. 
and uh, it's going to be, it's going to, the rewards are going to diminish as we go down, but it's really not the point. The point is to get you out there and, and get up and move and all those things. And to do that, I'm going to motivate you by giving away a bunch of free stuff. So uh, look that we're going to, this is going to be finalized before uh, the end of this month. So I'm talking with a bunch of different companies and I'll get it all straightened out. But the, but the goal is to get away a bunch of things. So everybody's like, I want to participate. And that's it. And that's it. That's my big, big spiel. That's all I got. I got to go. So everybody, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Maybe YouTube will notify you. Maybe not. It's a crapshoot. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Adios.